Power meters are becoming increasingly popular and also ever more affordable. But yet, what goes on inside these is still something of a mystery, as is how they're made. Until now, however, because PowerTap very kindly invited us into their production facility to talk us through exactly how their P1 pedal is made. Although, to be fair, inside this room there are four ways to measure power. There is the P1 pedal, there is the G3 hub, and there is also the C3 chainring. And then, right down the end, they've got their smart trainers that use electromagnets and work in a very different way. But, let's check out the P1. Right, so the man to talk us through the process is Justin Henkel, who's the category manager here at PowerTap. Justin, thanks for this. Where are we going to start? Uh, we're going to start right here where the uh, D-tube uh, and electronics are getting married together. So we adhere the electronics uh, for the pedal uh, to the D-tube where the strain gauges are located. So that looks like a pedal axle? This is a pedal axle. Actually, it's uh, what we call a, a D-tube or deformation tube. Uh, this is where the strain gauges are located where the pedal axle inserts into. OK, so you effectively press on that through the pedal body, and then the strain gauges detect uh, the force that's going through it. That is exactly what's happening. OK, cool. Right, there we go, step number one. Step two in the process, now that we have our D-tubes with electronics adhered to them, uh, is assembling that D-tube into the pedal bodies. So this machine right here is a press, and the uh, D-tube actually gets pressed into the pedal body permanently. Um, and then it goes down uh, to the next step, which is bearings. So we've got our strain gauges in the pedal body now, but how are we actually going to calculate power? Because we're going to need something else, aren't we? We're going to need angular velocity. Yeah, the strain gauges uh, take care of the force measurement, but to get power you also need angular velocity. And we have uh, what's called a multipole ring, which is essentially a magnet. And this magnet has 20 transitions from north to south. Uh, and there's a sensor inside the pedal, inside the D-tube actually, that measures those transitions and gives us 40 points of angular velocity. So every time you pedal, it's being able to calculate very precisely what your cadence is. Exactly. Cool. And that is on the, that's This the is axle, right, right on the axle, yes. Nice. Now this next step, Justin, has been confusing me slightly. This thing here that Mario's been using uh, sounds remarkably like a vacuum cleaner. What's, what's he actually doing with that? Uh, this is actually a vacuum. So oh, it is a vacuum. What we do is we do leak checks. So the, the internals on the, the pedal need to be sealed. Um, and in order to test for that, we put this into the battery compartment and perform uh, a vacuum check, basically, uh, a leak uh, test on the internals of the pedal. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it should be sealed even in British weather then? Even in British tight. weather, yeah. Nice. So we also have to do a, a cadence check. So as the axle is inserted into the pedal, we need to be able to make sure to um, calibrate the, the magnet and the Hall effect sensor so that they're detecting motion accurately. Do we know what cadence that's simulating? Uh, I think it's 120 RPM. Now, the next step is calibration, but it's a closely guarded secret. So we just, just move along. Nothing, nothing to see behind me, nothing at all. Okay, Justin, talk me through this one, because that looks, that looks like an oven. It is exactly an oven. Uh, power, need, power meters need to be able to calibrate for temperature change, yeah. uh, so they need a mechanism to compensate. So what we do is we calibrate at both low temperature and high temperature. Uh, because our strain gauges, we've been using the same ones for a number of years, uh, respond to temperature very um, predictably. Uh, we're able to calibrate at a high temperature, which creates a very clean line between low temp and high temp. So are you actually programming something in the pedal for this? Exactly. Each one of the pedals will get a different uh, compensation profile. So the, just like we calibrate each pedal individually, we're calibrating for high temp. Uh, so is that like a software thing then? It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's similar to a software. So the parameters of the high temp test will yeah. get loaded into each one of the pedals so that they're able to respond to temperature changes accurately. That's pretty cool. Now, uh, Justin, you want to explain why there's an upside down microwave in the corner of your production facility? What? What's going on? Yeah, so we have uh, microwaves all over in our production facility because there's, uh, at any given time, there could be 100 power meters broadcasting some uh, radio frequency. So 
The microwaves essentially create a Faraday cage and we're able to isolate all of the external signals and focus on the sensors that we're um, trying to work on. Okay, right, so in there we should have a finished pair of pedals, right? You, you should set that up, set pings. That'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? Anyway, right, that's by the by. Now it's time to put them in their box. Here, really, here we go. This is what I'm qualified for, hopefully. Okay, quality control check, yoink. There we go. Right, now if you want to see a little bit more from the factory here at Saris, then we've got a video where we take you through the production for one of their indoor trainers. And if you want to see that video, it turns out I'm actually not qualified for this. Oh, there we go, I nearly got it. So, it, <laughs> honestly, it's harder than it looks. There we go, right, we're all we're on the same page now. If you want to see that video with the factory tour, then click just up there. Or to see a little bit more about these P1 pedals, with Lasty actually unboxing them back at GCN HQ, you can click just down there. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe to GCN before going to either of those. To do that, just click on the globe.